to this episode of Athletics for Life podcast. Uh, I'm a host, C.D. Johnson, along with Mr. Coops. Yes. And uh, we have a special guest today, which is an ISU alumni, and it's Namun. Um, can you introduce yourself a little bit, Namun? Uh, I'm Namun Inkfire. Uh, I graduated ISU in 2016. Uh, I played on the basketball, soccer, and volleyball team for... Couple of years. Couple of years, many Couple years. Couple years. Um, yeah. Uh, Acumus was my favorite thing at ISU. I miss it. <laughs> and um, you had two sisters at school too? Yeah, still I have two playing. younger sisters still playing, still going to Acumus. Uh, I went to college in the University of California, Riverside. Play, went, played D1 soccer over there for a year, a little, a year. Um, graduated this year and now I'm back in Mongolia. Back in Mongolia. So the first time I, I met the moon was in Harrow, Beijing, basketball tournament. And I worked in China before and I went over there. And uh, I knew Miss McWiggin, your previous uh, athletic director there. We are good friends. And uh, I came over there and it was my first tournament. And I saw Aiju. One of the reasons that I'm working here, because you guys were awesome. The kids, mm. the coaches. And I saw this point guard with these bright yellow shoes, just <laughs> controlling everything and being on the court and you're coaching. And I was like, who's that, who's that girl? And I missed a doll of her. I'm like, that's, that's, that's not one. That's not one. And she was just destroying everything. So that's the first time I met you. Wow, I remember the bright yellow shoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that I, yeah. I do remember those too. <laughs> Actually, yeah. The white uniforms, those yeah. bright yellow shoes. Yeah. And you were at every <laughs> event. And you were talking about how Acumis, so Acumis is the big tournament in, in Asia. Yeah. Mm. Association of Chinese and Mongolian International Schools, and we play the three core sports. Can you can you tell us why Akamis was such a big thing for you? Um, well, I mean, okay, so fifth grade, every I know, I mean, like all the cool kids in the school went to Akamis, <laughs> and like I, I kind of fell in love with soccer at, at, at a really young age. And sixth grade, I tried out for Akamis, but there was no sixth grade. Sixth grade, wow. I tried out, out for soccer Akamis. And like never in a million years would I, I, did I think I would get in, but um, yeah, I got in. That ended up being my first Acumis. Wow, I, I didn't get too much playing time. time. I mean, obviously. Um, and then seventh grade, I tried out for or for basketball, and then eighth grade, I tried out for volleyball. Mm. And it kind of just evolved from there. And yeah, like the coaches taught me how to play. I mean, before before seventh grade, I did, I didn't know how to play volleyball or basketball. Okay. I, didn't, wow. I had no knowledge of it. Um, but yeah, sports became a huge passion of mine. And, yeah, I love it. It's, it's, it's great. It's, yeah, and that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah talk yeah. about that passion. Yeah. Um, what do you have a favorite moment from Acumis? Like, uh, is there one thing that stands out, whether it's from football or volleyball or basketball? Um, a winning? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Winning. No, no. Um, of course, no. It's part of no, it. Yeah. The whole reason I love Acumis, it's it's not just about the sport, playing mm -hmm. the sport. It's about you get to meet so many new people. You get to meet um, like new students, the coaches. Um, you get to go abroad. The uh -huh. whole thing. You get you you have you get that bond with all your teammates, with your coaches. So it's it's just a really cool experience mm -hmm. overall, rather than just like just being a sports competition. Because we can get that here, you know. But like yeah, story. Yeah. going abroad, Acumis, like that. Yeah, it, I think it's a I think it's a really cool opportunity for our students. Did you always feel and I have that more now when I'm here in Mongolia that? We go to China, right? And you got schools from Hong Kong, China. But we go down also, not as ISU, but as Mongolia, right? You mm -hmm. represent almost a country. Yeah. I always yeah. have that feeling when we go there. Yeah, yeah. That's why the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, they're, they're from Mongolia, man. Now I'm here. Where yeah. that's, that's, did you always have that, that feeling? Like, we're going down and it's it's like it's like a privilege to be on this team? I think I think my first couple of acronyms, I was too young to realize mm -hmm. okay. what I was doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely as I got along, it became... It became I mean, it was a huge part of my, I mean, ISU experience, Acumis. It was, it was honestly my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as I got older, I, I, I yeah, I, I definitely became more responsible with the fact that okay, I'm representing ISU, I'm, represent, I'm representing Mongolia. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it became a huge part of it. You mentioned like when you were younger, you were just kind of going, it was fun, and as you got older, you felt more responsible. How did your approach to the tournaments change? Like, as you kind of got older, you were kind of more of a leader. Did some of the girls look up to you and that kind of... Uh, I mean, yeah, when I started out, like I said, I, 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 I didn't get much playing time. I was, mm -hmm. I was still, you know, developing like my skills, my knowledge of the sport. So, but as I got older, I became, I mean, um, I got to be captain for a couple of the sports. Um, yeah, so I, th I think there was a huge like 
responsibility that I had to first, I guess, win, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Second, be um, be like a role model for the rest of my team, you know, mm-hmm. for the younger kids, because there, there are a lot of girls at like seven, seventh, eighth grade um, trying out, mm-hmm. you know? And so, so you want the Acumis experience to be something that they want to be a part of again, you know, something they want to develop. For sure. Because when I saw, when the first time I, I went to the tournament, and then you have you have always a few kids, and when you walk into the room, you're like, oh, they stand out, right? Mm. And we had that with you. And the, my, my girls were came in like, oh, look at her, right? Mm. Because of your shoes. <laughs> you, had that, you had that control, that leadership, and that, that, that aura around you, and you had to grow into that. So that's, mm. that's do you use, do you see that you use those skills that you learn through those tournaments and sports? Do you use them now in the rest of your life? Oh, I mean, I, I, I think, Definitely, I want to say, playing D one soccer in college, mm. it was it was like a it was like a shock to me. It was it was way bigger Let's than anything that. That, than <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I've ever seen or imagined before. But I think Acumis, like the kind of the setup of Acumis, traveling, you know, like being with your team all the time, um, representing your school. It, I mean, yeah, it definitely was kind of like training for for playing in college definitely for sure okay for sure because uh i I wrestled in college so i'm used to like Mm -hmm. the college scene um but yeah you travel a lot yeah it it, it almost turns into more of a uh, more so at d1 i feel uh you're you live eat breathe soccer no you really you really you know how how did you handle that like going into it you know, we're kind of, we're in Mongolia, we're kind of in our small little bubble. Yeah, yeah we go to China a little bit. Like, how did you handle going to UCLA, big D1 program? I mean, no, it was, it was a, it was a huge change for me. Um, I, we had, what, like 15, 16 hour practices per week. Um, practice uh, two hours, two hours a day, sometimes two sessions per day. Huh. Um, you're traveling sometimes twice a week to like different schools schools are coming to you and especially and you have to keep your academics at a certain level Mm -hmm. no it was it was a huge change for me um at first I kind of um I it it kind of got like I kind of got to a point where I didn't know which one I wanted to do Mm -hmm. because soccer was a huge thing in my life and it was a passion since I was a kid you know but then I know that I knew that like going pro for me wasn't really an option you know it was kind of just like a hobby that I was kind of pursuing at the moment well it sounds almost pro that the hours you train yeah but um yeah so it was it was was definitely a huge change for me but I mean you have to do what you have to do you know you have to make time for the things things that you're passionate about yeah Yeah. things that you love rather than just like okay I have to study now I have to work now you know Mm -hmm. yeah I think that's really important so how did it go? You, 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 you played for one year? Yeah, I played for a year. Um, my freshman year, it was definitely a cool experience, but it just got to the point where I had to think about my future. Mm-hmm. My, definitely my first year, my GPA wasn't that great because I was training so much. I couldn't, you know, like, um, I wasn't sleeping a lot. Like, I was at work. <laughs> I, was at a, I had a job, too. So, like, it was just it was just too much for me that, yeah. I, too much to manage. Yeah, I had to let it go. Yeah, for sure. Um, and now fast forward, you said you graduated from mm-hmm. UCLA, you're back in Mongolia. UC Riverside. UC Riverside, okay. Yeah. Um, but you're back here, um, kind of what are you doing now? Uh, I'm working for a textile company okay. producer, uh, it's called National Textile Group. Okay. Um, they produce like cashmere, car- carpet, carpets, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I graduated in... Uh, finance and computer science. Sure. I double majored. So yeah, just wow. just working for now, seeing what I like, seeing what I don't. <laughs> sure. And still playing sports? Uh, I mean, soccer, volleyball, basketball, not so much, no. but I, 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 I fell in love with a new sport. Um, that is? Powerlifting. <laughs> play, 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 yeah. Play, play, play. Um, powerlifting. Yeah, so... Cool. When, Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> when I, um, when I stopped playing football, or soccer. Um, I mean, I got into weight training while I was doing soccer. You had to yeah. do three times a week weight yeah. training sessions, right? right? Yeah. Um, and when I stopped soccer, I got I got kind of bored. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I didn't really have much to do with my free time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I UCR has a it's an awesome uh, facility, a huge gym. I think one of the best in America. And um, 
yeah, that's kind of how it started, and it, it became like a daily thing. I just it, like I just wanted to go more. I, I I'm a really active person, and I've been that way since I mean I was little. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of just became a passion of mine. So powerlifting. So can you what's your what's your training look like? Uh, right now, I'm, I actually just uh, registered for a competition in March. Okay. Yeah. That's a common question. Watch. I was going to ask yeah, if you were competing or not. Yeah, wow. I, I just registered for my first competition. I don't really know what it's going to look like because I've never competed before. Okay. And also, I don't have a coach. I just train myself. So I'm, I'm kind of nervous to see what it's going to be like. Okay. I'm definitely working on getting a coach. For sure. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. How much you bench? <laughs> What's your bench? Um, What's your bench? My one bench PR is 70 kg. That's pretty legit. That's good. That's good. It's, it's 70 okay. kg. Yeah. What's your PR, Mr. C? Uh, in kg. Uh, in pounds, 320. Oh, that's so solid. kg yeah. uh, divided by 2.2. Because I power lifted too. Yeah, you yeah. did? Yeah. I never competed, but in wrestling, it was definitely a big part of the training. Mm, you know, in yeah, colleges. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Very structured, very regular. Mm -hmm. We have, you have a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. Right. And so. Yeah. Wow. Great. So, but you don't look like a power lifter. I know. That's what everyone says. <laughs> no, it's not. But it's good. They, they don't yeah. expect it from me. Wow. So you train three, four, five times a week. What's what's uh, your split look like? Six times a week. Six. Yeah. Well, okay. So I don't want to say I'm just a power lifter, but like I feel like I should because it's such like a. No, because it's more, like, if you go if over the numbers, if then it's more... Yeah, if you're powerlifting, you can't be doing, like, fitness, cardio, and stuff like that, you know? Because you're just trying to build mass, right? But, like, it just seems so, like, I don't know, just powerlifting is a little boring for me. Um, so, I've been also, like, kind of, just, like, getting trying to get my form right in weightlifting. Awesome. Like, clean yeah. jerks, uh, snatches, and stuff like that. I've been watching a lot of CrossFit. I think that stuff's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's really cool. Um, so you've obviously taken the lessons that you've learned from like grade six sport through high school sports into college sports now into your everyday life. Um, at the beginning, we mentioned you have a couple sisters there in grade school or in, in school still, right? Yeah. Wow. Um, Right. One is. Yeah, one, one is. One yeah, is one. in college. Oh, okay. Um, you're one that's still in high school sports. Uh, what advice would you give to her uh, if she happens to watch this as far as how she should approach? Uh, what, what should she do to get the most out of her high school sport experience? Uh, be persistent with it. Be consistent. Try to get better as, as better as you can. Because um, I, I think especially not just me, but everyone that played when I was in school kind of just played like for Acmus, mm -hmm. you know, they like it was basketball season and they would just play basketball. And then when it would, when basketball season would be over, they wouldn't play basketball for until the next basketball season, you know? Sure. So yeah. I would just say like, be consistent with it throughout the year, you know? Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I think the one thing that I kind of, I don't want to say regret but I think the one thing that I wish I did was focus on one sport okay rather than be like okay in all three of them sure um so yeah there's a lot of different theory, theories about that we yeah. just had an interview with Mr. Silvis he mm -hmm. played water polo for Holland and he was saying that till like 12 14 you should do play do a lot of sports and he focused really on water polo but he was doing so many things around it so like you played all the way up to like you were 17, 18 when you graduated. Three different sports, but that's an interesting approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think when I got to college or when I played D1, I was a little behind mm -hmm. on my skills compared yeah, to the rest of the girls because sure. all, all, they played maybe one, maybe two sports in high school, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but I played all three and I didn't really develop my skills in soccer as much as I should have. So I definitely was a little behind. Sure. Um, uh, just to speak to that a little bit, um, in the States, the structure is totally different. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them, you know, coaching, having coached in the States would practice five days a week. Um, I know when I coached, one of the teams I coached, we even had morning practices a lot. Mm -hmm. So like they're constantly getting that training and there's, I feel like there's a lot more opportunities in the States as far as summer leagues or traveling leagues or um, just opportunities to play that I'm hoping Mongolia can catch up with. Uh, I know there's some camps going on, like some of the boys have mentioned they've been to volleyball yeah. camps in yeah. the summer. Um, 
uh, different clubs are happening. And I, I think it's slowly growing here. So that way athletes such as yourself could have just more opportunity to go and get those skills because uh, I think most of the athletes that we see probably aren't going to end up going Division One, especially. You right. know, there's D1 athletes are a select few. Mm, uh, yeah. It takes a very special athlete to make it. And so, um, you know, two days a week is going to be tough for, for an athlete such as yourself to, yeah. to have those skills. And they should definitely be persistent um, in the summer. Any chance they can touch a basketball, join a club. Right, but for sure. I also think that, I mean, for me, I, I didn't really know what D1 was going to be like until I got there. Like, honestly, like, like when I was, when, like, colleges would come, when reps would come, I would be like, oh, do you have D1 sports? But, like, I thought it was kind of just, like, <laughs> like, you could come and go. Like, <laughs> you know, like, ISU sports, like, you know, like, I didn't think it was that serious, but it's a huge thing. And people train from, like, the point, like, when they're, like, 12 and stuff, trying to get into D1 sports, you know? So, yeah. I, it's I, a thing, yeah. yeah. It's a big deal. It's, like, it's, it's a, a huge it's a very deal. Because the system in Europe is totally different. I mean, maybe not totally soccer, different. but just look at, like, basketball. Like, it. I mean, you get you get drafted D1 sports, like, your freshman year, and you go to the NBA. Like, it's a huge it's thing. Ticket, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 If you look back, what what year would you think you would have more wished to specialize in soccer? Like grade ten, grade nine? What would have been a good year if you if you look at the level difference of level? Uh, so I had um, a coach in I want to say in eighth grade. His name was David Chilton. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yeah, I think I remember him. Um, and he was the one that. I don't want to say, like, made me the soccer player. I feel like that's too much, but, like, <laughs> I feel like um, he, he kind of... Um, watching. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he, he's the one that made me, like, really fall in love with the sport and be like, okay, like, this is kind of something that, like... You were I good. Really I remember you playing. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> When you when we you wanted to be more specialized, so oh, yeah. what do you think? Grade nine, grade ten, grade eight. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, I remember that Athens. I think we got in like second place or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely after that year, I, I remember that summer thinking I I want I think I wanted to I think I was begging my parents to go to the U S. to IMG Academy. Oh, okay. To go play soccer there, and cool. I mean it didn't work out, but like yeah, definitely from that point. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You said you took sec. You think you took second at Akamas? I think so. Yeah. Do you do you think losing in a tournament helped you kind of feel like okay, I want to do this more? I didn't. Oh, for like you're sure. hungry, right? For sure. I'm like a I'm a really competitive person. Like I really care about like winning. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really bad, but um, yeah. Every, every time I lose, it kind of just makes me want to like do do better, you know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, for sure. Something kind of trigger you, right? Yeah. yeah, for sure. So if you look back on those Ackermans tournaments, you always try to teach your kids that it's about the software, right? It's about the memories and stuff. Do you do you value those wins? What would it do with you? Like if you if you would have come home at a second play, would you be bummed out for like a week or you would like Oh for sure. Two? No, no maybe not two. One for a couple days for sure. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, my parents come back for the times like I've been like off the bus, like crying and stuff, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, Athens was a huge deal. <laughs> it's what I looked forward to the entire year. <laughs> what do you remember most, though, from those trips? Like, what is it? Honestly, um, I don't really remember, like, playing or, like, the girls or, like, the competition. Like, I remember, like, the memories I had with my teammates. Mm -hmm. I met, I, I met like, awesome people at Athens from other schools that, like, I, I, I mean, I got in contact. I met with them in the States. Like, wow, cool. yeah, so, like. I could, yeah, no, I, I met a lot of cool people and it was like the memories, like the dinners or like the banquets and stuff like that. Those are the memories that I, I really remember. Let's mm -hmm. hope we can get Akimis going again soon. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting to hear that because, you know, a lot of times at the Akimis tournaments, uh, we'll get up there, the host will get up there and, and we'll talk about like, oh, these are friends you're going to have for mm -hmm. the rest of your life and these are connections you're going to have. And a lot of the kids will kind of scoff at that, you know, mm -hmm. and say like, oh, psh, I just want to win the tournament or, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. Um, but it's true, like you, you meet some cool people from other schools and then you happen to be in the same city or in the same part of somewhere else in the world and it's like, hey, do you want to meet up? Do you, yeah, um, I actually think ISU, I remember ISU, ISU had the reputation, at least when I was at, for like being the most social school. Because I feel like at Acmist, at least when I was there, schools didn't really socialize with each other. They would play their games, they would just like be in their own, yeah. you know, 
and but like I see was still really social. Yeah, still, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is also what, what we said is like we go down to China as Mongolia, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like if France, France is like, oh, we're going somewhere warm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we connect with it. And, I you always, you know, we always try to be the most social team. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very, it's very, it's very important. Yeah. Uh, but your athletic directors also had that philosophy mm-hmm. where they they cared about winning. And look, I know Miss McGuigan and Mr. Doble, they care about winning, mm-hmm. but they care more that you had a good time and built those lasting sure. memories. Mm-hmm. And we have that same philosophy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're very into uh, just coming back to your where you're right now. You're lifting. What's what's your lifestyle look, is looking like? Like, are you, are you eating clean constantly or are you just very focused on that? Is that like very obsessive a little bit or not? Or as um, I was when I was lifting. So, so right now I'm working, I mean, nine to six. I'm working mm-hmm. like, wow. you know, just fixed hours. It's it's really hard to train, especially like with traffic. Like you're stuck in traffic <laughs> for like an traffic? hour. We have traffic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little bit. And like you're ju- just your whole day's gone. So now I train in the mornings. I'm at the gym at 6.30. Uh, train for two hours, get to work by nine. Um, I, I try to eat as clean as possible. Um, but like you just don't have time to cook sometimes. You you yeah. really don't have time to make your meals. Honestly, Michelle makes most of my meals now. Like, well done, Michelle, you. well done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's hard sometimes. But I, I'm definitely take, having my caloric intake at, at a fixed level, for sure. Do you do a lot of research on your training? Yeah, I, I uh, not so much now, but I mean, I'm really like fascinated with like, I mean like, like the philosophy of things and like why it has to be that way and like like why do you have to train this to mm-hmm. become like this or like why mm-hmm. do you have to eat like this to become like this so yeah i did i did a lot of research i mean i think my first like year or so but now it's, i don't have time for that <laughs> yeah and you said the training and you uh, the, the soccer triggers you to go into the lifting yeah that's a big thing over there right? yeah. the, the lifting side. yeah 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 in the states it's really big just yeah. along with any sports is no, it's huge like just kind of building that overall strength. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be interested even to know, like, kind of what what they did at, uh, for your soccer program that was very sports specific, because like we had a, a very like wrestling specific uh, mm. focus. You know, it was a lot of the same lifts, the bench, deadlifts, squats, um, but there was a lot of pulls, right? Because in wrestling, you're constantly right. holding and pulling. So there's uh, always some pulling aspect to it. I'm, I'm just curious, you know. I always keep like that. That's what <laughs> yeah. Um, like from a, what it looked like in general. Uh, like what was football specific training would look like as opposed to wrestling. I mean, soccer, you're not, I mean, you're not doing a lot of upper body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, some, you're doing a lot of stuff to get your vertical up. Sure. Um, and then you're just building core strength and leg strength. Yeah. Like that's, that's your arms. Call it. Yeah, uh-huh. you don't, you're not really using your arms. The defenders are maybe trying to get bigger, but I mean, that's pretty much it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So our whole philosophy with our podcast is about educational athletics. Mm-hmm. So teaching life skills through yeah. sports. What's the, the main life skill that you learned through all the sports experiences you had? Consistency. Consistency. Yeah, that's, that's key. Consistency is key. No, actually, yeah. 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 Can can you give us an example of how do you apply that right now? Um, I mean, right now, my my everyday looks the exact same. I I get up at 5.30 a.m. I'm at the gym at 6.30. I I eat the same. I mean, I try to eat the same. I try to eat at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. I work the same. I get home at the same time. I see my friends mostly at the same time, same same day of the week, blah, blah, blah. You just, you, I mean, I think that for a lot of people that ends up being really boring, they get, they get bored. So I was just going to ask, how do you keep it from getting right, stale? Right, but I, I really like being on like a routine. I think that's what keeps me like focused sure. and like driven. But um, yeah, I think that that's what works for me. I, I, I have a, I have a um, Instagram account for like a fitness page. Um, and a lot of people ask me like, how, how do you get yourself to go to the gym? Mm-hmm. And like, it's just inside, it's, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, just inside. inside. The first month, like, you really have to, like, get yourself, you have to really have to force yourself to go. But, like, after a month, it's just like, okay, I want to go, I want to go. Like, you, you become addicted to it. And yeah, we talked this morning with, uh, I was asked to get into the, to an advisory class for a grade 12. Mm-hmm. And we talked about that stuff. And I talked about what I do is habits and intentions. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't really have goals. So you have your powerlifting company, that could be a goal, but my intention is to do these things every day. Mm-hmm. And once these habits get into the system, like, why do you do that? Just, 
and just do it, right? Mm, great, yeah. interesting, awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, you mentioned you have an Instagram account. Uh, where can people that maybe need a little bit of motivation, uh, need a little bit of inspiration, find you to? Uh, uh, my username is Moon Can Lift. Like okay. Moon, like the Moon, moon Can Lift. Moon Can Lift. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you guys can check that out. That's awesome. What's your main drive with your Instagram account? What's your main goal? Is it just to share knowledge or just to? Um, yeah, just just to share knowledge, help people get. Because cool. I mean, on my main Instagram account, I was posting like just like stories of like my workouts and stuff like that. And I had a lot of um, people ask me like, oh, like what kind of workouts do you do? Like, what does your nutrition look like? So I just thought I would start it. Um, yeah, it's to help some people out. I mean, I've been. I've, I've been training a couple of girls that DM'd me on, on that Instagram cool. page, like just a couple times a week. That doesn't get in the way of my training too much. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, just trying the Keep best the structure I can. going, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are interested. That's great. Yeah, yeah. we'll put a link in the description yeah. in the awesome. of the podcast. Um, do you have a final? So, our audience, we hope a lot of student athletes look at our podcast, and it's also for them. So, parents, we try to connect coaches, parents, and student yeah. athletes. For those kids who are like have sports, what would you tell them? Like if they're if they're in grade six or grade seven and they want to, there's tryouts for basketball. What, what what would you tell them? Uh, just try it out. Like you never know what's gonna happen. You, you maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but you'll never know if you don't try. I, yeah, I think that's what I would say. That's great. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thank yeah, you so much. Appreciate it. It was a good talk. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Of course. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in.